watch it. So welcome everyone. Welcome to our session today, developing young active global citizens to tackle the sustainable development goals. This is a side event at the 2022 ECOSOC Youth Forum that is starting tomorrow, uh, virtually as well. So you still have time to register. And we're really happy to have you all with us today. Uh, this workshop is organized by the Department of Global Communications, the Civil Society Unit at the UN and AFS Intercultural Programs. A quick Zoom instructions before we begin. I imagine many of you are quite familiar with Zoom at this point, but just so you know how we're gonna be using Zoom today. Uh, first thing we invite you to rename yourself. I know many of you said, greetings on the chat and where you are connecting from, but maybe so it's easier for people to identify you. You can rename yourself. You can put your first name, last name, how you prefer to be called uh, in your country. If your internet connection allows, and I see some people have it on, uh, please turn your video on. This will be, as I said, very interactive. So we would love to see your faces. Uh, especially during the breakout room moment. Uh, so make sure you have that on. And we will keep you muted while we are presenting, but you will have some time uh, to unmute yourselves during the Q&A. And we're also gonna be using other interactive features throughout. You can also use the reactions function in Zoom to interact. Uh, most options are positive. If you go clap hands, thumbs up, hearts, laughing of so much crying. I've heard that's a thing from my generation. Younger people don't use that emoji. Surprise emoji, celebration emoji, or click on the three dots for your own emoji. And last but not least, uh, we also have live transcript available, which is closed caption and in English. So we're mostly non-native English speakers here, including myself. Uh, so that makes a little bit easier. You can enable or disable that if you want. And last but not least, uh, make sure to share your impressions, comments. If you are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, LinkedIn, social media, you can use the hashtags youth2030, hashtag AFS effect, and tag us at AFS, the UNDGC, underline CSO, and the UN ECOSOC. So feel free to use social media and interact with us through there as well. I've been talking for five minutes already and you don't know me, you saw my name there, but I'm Ana Carolina or Caro Cassiano. I am head of education development at AFS Intercultural Programs and I'll be your host and moderator for this session today. Uh, and I'm connecting from the south of Brazil, Florianópolis. And yes, to get us started, I would like to start by introducing two other people who are with us today. Uh, one of them is Hava Diallo. Hava, I'm gonna put uh, your video on Spotlight just so everyone can see you as well. Uh, and my colleague from AFS, Nick Lapson Anguno. Hava is the chief of the civil society unit at the United Nations Department of Global Communications. She'll be sharing a few welcome words as well as my colleague, Nicole Labinson Angulo, or Nikki, who is the Deputy Chief of AFS Organizational Development of Organization Development at AFS. Welcome both. Hava, the floor is yours if you want to say a few words to the group. You are muted, just so you know. As usual, no coffee, no nothing. I'm like, let me get my uh... Let me get my um, my mic, which I can't find anywhere because too many apps are open. Well, hello, everybody. Greetings from wherever you're connecting from. I'm connecting from Valhalla, New York, just outside of New York City, uh, from the UN headquarters here in uh, New York City. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm really delighted to be here with AFS Intercultural Programs, really a longstanding partner of the Department of Global Communications and excited to be doing this event, uh, side event for um, the ECOSOC Youth Forum 2022. And it's really, um, for me, important that we have such a topic of you know, developing, uh, uh, creating active young global citizens 
uh, you know, because, you know, as we all know, communities really are facing so many unprecedented challenges. And it's really important that we are equipped, you know, to meet these challenges, especially young people uh, and young professionals, I would say. Uh, and that we have, you know, young professionals and young people who can look beyond their communities, look beyond the neighborhood and, you know, have a global outlook and an open mind whilst at the same time contributing towards a sustainable future to meet some of these global challenges that you all know so well, like climate change, inequalities, racial discrimination, or even something like uh, food security. And, you know, with so uh, less time, less than 10 years now that we have to achieve the sustainable development goals, uh, SDGs, or many of you call them the global goals, it's critical that young people like yourselves, you know, really are equipped to, to, to meet these challenges head on. I keep saying it's important, especially against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic, as we look towards our, our, our road to recovery, that uh, we create an, uh, an effective and capable army. Now, if you're into K-pop like me, I'm not talking about the BTS army. I'm talking about an army that includes a cadre of empathetic and responsive global citizens who understand the need to effectively communicate and collaborate with other people from various cultures, various countries and various perspectives. So for me, that's why I was so excited to be doing this workshop with AFS uh, intercultural programs. I myself always say I'm a global citizen, but I've become a global citizen from my lived experiences in life. So I'm really excited to dive into the workshop that Anna has mentioned to really get you know, um, the tools and the prerequisite um, resources that we all need to affect change around the world. So again, a pleasure to be with you. So excited to have a strong youth voice that is here in this workshop and really excited to hear what the young leaders and young professionals have to say about what it means to be a global citizen and a change maker. Thank you so much, Anna, over to you. Thank you, Hava. Nikki, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Carol. Thank you, Hawa. Um, as it said on the slide, my name is Nikki Levinson Angulo. I'm the Deputy Chief of Organization Development at AFS International. Um, I'm based in Brooklyn, New York. I saw some other Brooklynites here, um, but Welcome to all of you. It's so wonderful. I My favorite thing about Zoom calls is seeing in the chat just like where everybody's from. And it's so exciting to see such a diverse crowd of attendees. Um, and many of you are from one of the 55 countries where AFS actually has partner offices. So if you've never looked up AFS in your home country, I'd encourage you to do that. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. Like Carol said, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a panel discussion, but then we're going to have breakout rooms and you'll get to meet people from all over the world and really, you know, do something active. So stick with us. Um, I want to thank the United Nations Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC, for including us as an official ECOSOC Youth Forum side event. And as Carol mentioned, side events are happening today, but there's a virtual forum tomorrow. And I would encourage all of you to follow along and engage with the ECOSOC Youth Forum as much as you can. And most of all, I want to thank Hawa and the UN Department of Global Communications for partnering with us on today's workshop and also just for all the important work you do. I would encourage everybody here, if you don't follow the DGC on Twitter and social media and have their newsletter, it's a really great way to stay engaged with the UN agenda, right? And the UN agenda is fundamentally about making the world a better place. So definitely connect with them. Um, so really quickly, just by like a show of digital emoji hands, before today's workshop, how many of you had ever heard of AFS before? Okay, I see a few hands, that's great. Um, and how many of you here, I know Bill Graham is, because he's a host parent, how many of you are actually AFSers? So an AFSer is someone that's one of our 500,000 alumni, one of our 50,000 volunteers, or one of our hundreds of staff or board members around the world. Or maybe even you're participating in one of our programs. Again, let me see some digital raised hands also a great way if it's morning or it's evening a great way to wake yourself up a little arm exercise awesome well thank you for being with us today so if this is the first time you ever heard about afs super fast we were founded in 1914 so we're old <laughs> we're over 100 years old and we were founded by volunteer ambulance drivers so these were young people 
right? Young, the original, the OG active global citizens who actually participated in World War I um, and were horrified and came home and decided that the best way to prevent war in the future was to help young people connect across culture. And 2022 is actually the 75th anniversary of our exchange programs. But we do a lot more than study abroad. Um, we do in-person and virtual initiatives, and through those, we develop active global citizens. Just like Hawa said, we have the exact same goal as Hawa, like how do we create more people around the world, especially young people who understand that we live on one small blue interconnected planet and we need to think globally, right? Um, we also help globalize schools and institutions and we expand access to intercultural education through workshops like the one that you're in right now. So before I hand it over to my amazing colleague, Carol, um, who's gonna lead today's inter interactive workshop, I wanna just give you all a special invitation. Um, Carol, if you go to the next slide, if you're interested in this workshop, then you might be really interested in the 2022 Youth Assembly that AFS is hosting this August in New York City from August 12th to 14th. Um, it's youthassembly.org. You can look us up on social media. It's at the Youth Assembly, but please check it out. If you enjoyed today's workshop, you might really enjoy coming to this event. Um, so I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. For If you're here, it means you're already one step closer to thinking like an active global citizen and definitely are part of helping make the world a more just and peaceful place. So thank you again to Hawa. Thank you again to the United Nations and for leading the, the SDG agenda. And I'll turn it over to Carol, who's going to lead our super cool workshop. Thank you, Nikki, and thank you for introducing AFS as well, and great to see there are so many people here who are familiar, but now that we've talked about us, about AFS, we want to get to know you who are connected with us today. So I want to invite you to go to your browser, it can be on your phone or a different tab on your computer if you have it open, and go to menti.com. You can use the link my colleague Steffi shared on the chat directly, that will take you to the question there or you can scan the QR code on the screen. There will be a couple of questions there. If you already answered the first, just hold a minute and I'll move to the second shortly. If uh, you have any issue visualizing, just what you're gonna see in the screen, the first is a map where we're asking people to drag the dot and place on the map where you are connecting from today. In case you can't see that map or you have any tech issues or limitations to see that, just please feel free to type on the chat so we can know where you are connecting from as well. And I'll share now what we're looking like in this map and who is connecting from where. If you have any issues with the Menti and going through it, the information is still on the chat. You can click there directly and you will see on the new screen the information on the Menti as well. And let's see what we have here of answers. We have 31 people already replied. Um, Remember, this is approximate, but it's to give us a visual uh, where people are connecting from. So we have many different places of Europe, the US, uh, Canada, uh, Brazil, further south looks like Argentina, maybe Bolivia, uh, Central America, India, Indonesia, West Africa, South Africa and many different places. So as we saw in the greetings, very, very global. Feel free to continue answering. I'll just move to the next question. And we also want to hear from you how familiar you are with the topics that we are covering today. So you can rate yourself and feel free to be honest. This is just to get a temperature of the room and what's your level of experience in the UN Sustainable Development Goals. If you have a lot of experience, put that closer to the right, number five. Uh, less experience is closer to one. Then with active global citizenship, intercultural skills, and public advocacy. And here really, we wanna know connected to the UN SDGs. Uh, so a group very, as a group between intermediate and very experienced maybe in public advocacy last, but we'll start exploring a bit how we can be public advocates for the SDGs a bit more today. Let's move to the next question, second to last here, and feel free to keep answering if you're still getting to this question. 
Our next question is open-ended and you can type a short text, a few words. Uh, what do you expect to get out of this workshop today? So share with us, it is maybe connecting with new people, hearing best practices, new knowledge, new skills. I see some answers coming in, experiences, understanding what feels urgent and important to young leader, open-mindedness, dialogue, intercultural exchange, more experience to attend the Youth Assembly 2022, an idea for ways that I can make my home community more Hello. aware of the SDGs, inspiration, learning something new, experiences are coming out a lot, great to hear that, hearing from young people, wonderful, our panel will tackle that, connecting with others, wonderful, keep them coming. And we move to the last one for those who already filled in and take your time to get to it. We also wanna hear from you. What are you bringing to this conversation today? Uh, it might be some of the things already mentioned here, might be an attitude, your open-mindedness, your curiosity, might be your own experience and knowledges. So feel free to share with us, what are you bringing to this workshop today? an open heart and mind, life experience, experience, active listening and facilitation skills, open-mindedness and creativity, curiosity, just here to learn, empathy and willing to get inspired, my own personal experience and knowledge, listening, active listening, willingness to connect, experience in mental health, you women's rights and LGBTQ plus community, critical thinking, wonderful. I know you're still answering and the form will remain ready, but just we just wanted to read a few to get a temperature of the room and getting to know a bit everyone who is connected with us today. So thank you for participating in this quick Menti. And I will go back to our presentation now to so we can dive into the topic and we can review our agenda for today. So as my colleague Nikki had mentioned, we just got started with our welcome and introductions. And I'll start a little bit sharing why are we discussing this topic today and why we wanna talk about developing young uh, active global citizens to tackle the SDGs. After that, we're gonna hear some youth perspectives. We're gonna hear from five young active global citizens from different parts of the world doing work in different fronts. And we're gonna hear from them their perspectives about what does it mean to be an active global citizen and what is the role of young active global citizens to tackle the sustainable development goals and share a little bit about their story, their experiences and the work they do. Then we're gonna have some hands-on activity. We have a lot of other people here with green and blue backgrounds like myself. Those are my colleagues from AFS from different parts of the world that work for AFS internationally. And they will be leading as facilitators the breakout rooms. So you get a chance to connect in smaller groups led by an AFS facilitator to practice an intercultural education tool. So please stay with us until then because you're gonna get a chance uh, to really be more hands-on and engage. And finally, we'll go back to plenary after the breakout rooms for some closing reflections. So let's dive right in. And I, as I was mentioning, let's start by framing this topic and really exploring, so why are we here today? And why do we believe we need to develop young active global citizens to tackle the sustainable development goals? Well, the first reason is what is the role of active global citizens? And the main reason is that we believe that active global citizens, they understand global issues and global challenges and they take action to address them. That is active global citizens are people and especially young people that really play an active role in taking action for a sustainable future. And part of it in the recovery from COVID-19 crisis. And this action is, even though the global is in their names, they're not only global scope, but they really start in their local communities and beyond. So that's one of the main reasons. And one of the ways that we frame the global challenges 
and that really organize how we are thinking uh, on the key global challenges that we have to address today are through the sustainable development goals. So when we talk about a sustainable future, we don't mean only environmental sustainability, which of course is key, but we are talking about this framework that is proposed through the UN Sustainable Development Goals or Global Goals, which are at the heart of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And these are a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet. Uh, the SDGs are really an urgent call for collective action at all levels. And they really recognize that ending poverty and other deprivations must really go hand in hand with strategies that improve health, education, reduce inequality in many different ways, and spur sustainable economic growth, all while tackling uh, climate change and working to preserve our oceans and forests and a peaceful societies. So I understand many of you are already familiar, but just we just wanted to do a recap uh, and share how does this connect with active global citizens and what are their roles? And more specifically, uh, we consider that tackling global challenges uh, requires global and intercultural knowledge and skills. And that's what active global citizens have. Those are their core power skills and power competences that they have. And to give you an idea, what is part of these competencies, they come at different levels. There are many frameworks from UNESCO, from the OECD that try to define what are these core competencies for active global citizens. And I brought you here one that we use in AFS. We believe that this knowledge, skills, and attitudes, they are at four different levels. And these are some of the key core competences that active global citizens need to have. First in the personal level, adaptability, critical thinking, and self-awareness. In the interpersonal level, what many of you mentioned today that you're bringing to the conversation today, open-mindedness and valuing differences as well. In the intercultural level, effective communication, being able to communicate with people from different backgrounds, different cultures, empathy, understanding how others feel, how others see the world, how others make sense and meaning of the world, and really treating others how they wanna be treated. And in the global uh, dimension, really having this global awareness and understanding of how our challenges in the local communities really connect with global challenges, uh, knowing about what's happening in other parts of the world and how they influence and impact ourselves and our local communities as well. And finally, change making, which is precisely this component of call to action. So what do we do with this? And how do we ensure a collective well-being and sustainable future for all? So this is a bit what we have in mind when we talk about the connection of intercultural skills, intercultural competences and active global citizenship. We believe they are core competences for global citizens to take action and be active uh, as global citizens. And you might be wondering what this looks like. So that's why we invited today to share with you more hands-on from their experiences and their point of view, uh, some youth perspectives. So these are young people uh, that are working uh, or volunteering uh, as activists or have a deep passion in their studies and work life to tackle the SDGs. And uh, I'll do a quick round introducing all of them and then call them one by one to share with us. In the meantime, I ask, my colleagues, Nick and Steph, if you can help me spotlighting the image of our guests, as I call them. Uh, and apologies if I mispronounce someone's name, please feel free to correct me once uh, you have the word. Uh, so first we have Jadaya Spencer. She is the executive director of the International Youth Leadership Institute in the US. 
She's an advocate for improving access to opportunities that enhance the lives of youth, people of African descent and indigenous people worldwide. And I believe connecting from Brooklyn, if I saw that chair on the chat. We also have with us Luisa Romero. She's the co-founder of Get Up and Go Colombia and innovation officer at Civicus, World Alliance for Citizen Participation. Luisa's volunteering experience at home and abroad led her to lead initiatives which contribute to peace building in her country by empowering young people to make a difference in the local level. We also have Sipo Inku. She's a Youth Assembly Ambassador from South Africa, currently residing in the US. She started participating in humanitarian work at the age of 18 through volunteering with organizations such as World Vision International, as well as Generation Earth and is an active member of the United Nations of USA as a youth advocate and mentor. We also have with us Shacha Dudi, who is the co-founder and president of Footsteps Bangladesh, a social enterprise which addresses social challenges in the fields of environment, health, and education, with a vision of transforming community mentality from aid dependency to self-reliance. And last but not least, we have a fellow Brazilian, Amanda Magnani. She's a Brazilian journalist and photographer currently based in Prague, Czech Republic. And her work is mostly focused on migration, culture, and climate justice. Her journalistic work has been published in outlets such as National Ge Geographic, Al Jazeera, and BBC. So welcoming you all, we're really happy to have you with us. And I would like to invite Jadaya to get us started and share a few words about what does it mean to be an active global citizen to you, Jadaya? Uh, thank you so much, Carol. Jadaya here from the faraway land of Brooklyn, New York. I'm really glad to get to be with folks from all over the world today. Um, as Carol mentioned, I'm the executive director of the International Youth Leadership Institute and also a main UN uh, youth representative at the United Nations on IYLI's behalf. Our acronym for International Youth Leadership Institute is IYLI, so you'll hear me refer to it as that um, throughout the day. And I just really like what's coming to my mind right now, um, as I'm already so like inspired by the discussion about like the different ways that active global citizenship can take place. Like I, I had like, you know, thoughts about prepared remarks, but what kept coming to my mind is my little cousin, right? So I have like a huge extended family, like at, you know, the International Youth Leadership Institute, we are, as we get to know each other and we get to learn more about the world together, we also just become like family, you know, like, you know, those people who are like family to you, even though you're not related by blood. So I'm going to call her my cousin anyway. Does anyone else have like people like that in your life? Just like show of hands. I say, I'm seeing some nods. Um, yeah. So she's my cousin, long story short. And so I was just talking to her yesterday and we were discussing a situation where where um, we're having like a, a group meeting and um, like the person like who's leading the team, she has like an idea. She's like, this is what we should do. And, you know, I, I'm like, man, I don't actually agree with that. But like, I can look at her and I see she's kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't agree with that either. And I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to actually say something. I'm like, okay, to be honest, um, maybe can we try like a different approach? I'm not sure if that's the best idea. And let me tell you why. And then like the person who we were speaking to, she was like, huh, you know what, you have a good point. All right, but have you considered this? And so then, then a, a discussion took place. And so then we decided on a compromise where we met in the middle, but a way that was able to meet the needs of all people. And my cousin said to me afterwards, she was like, Jadea, you're so brave. Um, because I was just gonna say, okay, let's do the thing that they said. And I was like, even though I could tell by the look on your face that you didn't agree, you were just gonna like go for it. You're just gonna say, yeah, let's do it. She said, yeah. And I would have just been like, oh, I hate this every step of the way, but she would have done it. And so then I said, but I don't, you know, but why suffer in silence? Right. And she said, because sometimes I feel like I'm in a box and that I can't actually do anything about the situation, which reminds me of what Maya Angelou once said, the great poet. She said, you know, if you're in a situation that you do not like, you only have two options, either a change the situation or B, change how you feel about the situation. And so when I think about what it is to be like an active global citizen, 
and the kind of people that the world needs today, there's a saying that dissatisfaction brings about change. And what act, I had to even ask myself, what does active mean? And active means like engaging or ready to engage in energetic pursuits. And so like, like, what does it mean to take action, like to actually move as opposed to just contemplating? So an active global citizen, like at the International Youth Leadership Institute, we call them our fellows, like the kind of people that the world needs are the people who will observe perhaps and experience like dissatisfaction, but decide to do something about it. And it can show up in so many different kinds of ways, right? Like leadership is not necessarily being the loudest person in the room or being the person who has all the best ideas but being a person who is willing to do what you can to make any situation better than how it was before. And so it can show up in small, small ways, like, you know, say like cleaning up after yourself, if you're using a public restroom, something that I feel like the world could use um, some more of, but like leadership shows up in that way too. And it can show up in ways like speaking up for someone who may not feel like confident in speaking up for themselves. Or like if we think about even the ability for us to be able to use Zoom right now or to even have like electricity or to even have like the concept of internet, can you imagine trying to explain the internet to a person from 50 years ago in any country? It's like, okay, like we have these, these boxes with screens and we sit in front of them and we can talk to people from thousands and thousands of miles away is because somebody took the time to think hmm, like I don't like that I have to send paper mail and it takes months to send a message back like I actually want to see how I can do something about it in this very moment that we have together is the combination of thousands if not millions of people's minds putting their minds together to see how we can make something new how we can like create and solve a problem. You know, they say necessity is the mother of invention. Does that make sense? So like the thing that I would just offer to you folks today um, in terms of active global citizenship, in terms of like how we go about our everyday lives is if you're experiencing something and you, you might say to yourself, hmm, somebody should do something about that. Like, ah, oh, I don't even necessarily like that. Like, you know, some people may say, oh, you know, the streets are too, it's too dark here. How can we get more light? Or, hmm, I noticed that there's a need. Like, do what you can to actually try and fill that need. And if you feel like, oh, you know, you feel like my cousin did, if you feel like you're in a box and that there's nothing that you can do, like, in just take this into your mind, like, try not to see obstacles where you could be seeing opportunities. And if there's opportunities to be seen in like the appreciation of other people, maybe it's not you, maybe it's another person who you can help to reach, maybe it's advocating for the thing so you can get the resources. But to me, at the end of the day, that's what active global citizenship is. That is not necessarily that, you know, the value of a human life, it doesn't depend on where it sits on a border right? Like the, at the end of the day and having that empathy and caring for other people, even if I see a need that doesn't directly relate to my everyday life, because I have to understand that if it were me, I would want somebody to help me. <laughs> if it were me or if it were my grandmother, I would want someone to help her. If it were my little brother, I would want someone to help them. And being able to see that in all of humanity and carry it in accordance with that, that there's always space for a win-win where we can create mutually beneficial situations for all people and also benefiting our planet. It's our responsibility after all. So I can go on forever, but I'm really looking forward to getting to hear from you folks, getting, looking forward to the breakout conversations later. Hope this is helpful, but I'm really looking forward to engaging in this discussion. Um, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Dodaya. Very inspiring words and many references and really bringing this idea of being an active global citizen towards the collective well-being, right? I think you really uh, reinforced that. Uh, I would like to invite Louisa. Louisa, if you want to share a few words, comment, react to what Jadaya said, or share your own view and experience, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Carol. Yeah, so I am Luisa. I'm from Colombia. I'm the co-founder of an organization that is called Get Up and Go Colombia. So what we do is that we transform former war territories in Colombia and we transform those territories into cultural and touristic destinations. Uh, we do this by empowering people who were affected by the, the, the Colombian armed conflict. And it has been just a, a lovely journey during the last six years because we have been 
uh, capable of teach new to new new skills and different tools in the areas of sustainable tourism, entrepreneurship, and building wisdom. Something that I have learned about this is how important is empathy because. I think that from empathy is the beginning of everything. Like feeling that like what these families have been going through because of the conflict and being able to, to show them that it's possible to have a second chance or to create a new reality is what inspires us to keep working forward to, to create something, something that is really meaningful for them. Uh, also, I wanted to share that uh, at the same time, I have been working like with my organization, but also I'm currently working for Civicus as an innovation officer. And it has been like really amazing to see like both worlds combining one. From one side, like I keep the work like locally in my organization, but at the same time, I'm working with this organization that it uh, works with different with different uh, institutions and local organizations in the global south. So it's like a way to, to connect as an active citizen. So from my perspective, I'm thinking right now in a quote from the Dalai Lama that says that sometimes if you feel too small to create a change in the world, try to sleep with a mosquito. And I think that is a really good one because as a young people, we feel sometimes that maybe we are too young to do something or maybe we need to wait until we finish uni or we complete a master's degree or we, yeah, we finalize like a lot of plans before doing something. And here is like the, the call to action that to be a global active citizen, we can do it now by understanding or by seeing close what we can do in our communities. Uh, something that I also realized is that we believe that or oh, we have this like stigma that to be a global citizen we need to be to do something super big and and the idea here is that we can do something with a local purpose like acting very locally in our communities but with a glo global perspective. So in the case of, of, of the work that we do we, with my organization, uh, we work with tourism. So we work with the local communities, but at the same time, we have tourists that come from all over the world. And we just show them uh, like what peace means for us and how we are building a uh, peace like through sustainable activity, activities in the tourism sector. So this is like a kind of, of mix of, of ideas about what does it mean to be, to, to be an active global citizen. Thank you so much, Louisa, and thank you for your inspiring work. That's another thing I love, right? Reading different ways uh, that this work can be done and how uh, different contexts uh, this can be put into action. Uh, and I would like to invite Sipo, if you want to share with us a few words, so feel free to comment uh, or respond to, to anything that Jadaya or Louisa said that uh, gave you an insight or an idea or that you agree or disagree with. The floor is yours. Okay, okay. Uh, good morning, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me clearly? Okay, uh, my name is Sipo Nube. Um, I'm a Youth Assembly Ambassador. I'm also a member of the International Federation of Medical Students Association and the United Nations Association of USA. I'm a global youth leader and advocate tackling um, sustainable development goals number three and number four. Number three, um, addressing um, good health and well-being, and number four, addressing quality education. I'm honored to be on this panel today to share my thoughts and experiences on how we as young people can contribute to a, a positive social impact, as well as advocate for sustainable development goals in our communities. Um, the theme that we have today is important because it speaks about young active global citizens. Now, to me, uh, being a young global active citizen means being diverse in our actions, as well as um, being diverse in our actions as young leaders in terms of collaboration and engagement instead of focusing on single issues faced by our communities. Um, it's about finding more innovative ways to advocate for influence and motivate others on an international scale. Now, as I was preparing for this panel, there's an important, um, there's something important that I read from AFS and it addressed being an active global citizen as someone who understands the global ideas and, and that global ideas and solutions must fit with the complexities of local contexts and cultures. With that being said, we all face uh, different challenges in the pursuit of tackling sustainable development goals in our communities. In my capacity as a youth um, ambassador, I've seen the importance of cultivating ideas at local scale, then networking with like-minded individuals 
on global platforms to gain more exposure and ideas on what can be done to solve ongoing sustainable solutions. So I was born and raised in South Africa. And as was mentioned earlier, I started my work as a youth advocate as early as 18 years. For some, it may seem late, but for me, it was uh, quite early. And in that time, I was working closely with local nonprofit organizations, which addressed sustainable development goal three and four. I did this to kind of get a closer look at challenges being faced by um, rural communities. Some challenges included, but were not yet, um, access to resources. Um, there were challenges with um, lack of consistent access to medical care. There were lower literacy rates, et cetera. The list goes on about the challenges that were being faced in these rural communities. This then influenced my decision to study medicine, but also take in interest in issues pertaining to equal and accessible education and healthcare for all. And in my engagement with other youth leaders, as I traveled around the world, I came to the realization that although we are tackling different sustainable development goal areas, they are intertwined. In some cases, we face similar challenges just on different scales. And as young leaders, we all have the question, how can I help to advance the sustainable development goals? And I feel like although, although there is not a single answer to that, um, there's many things that we can do as young youth leaders, and it can be through building awareness as well as taking action. Those are the two main things that I find um, give, gave me success in all my endeavors. And people in communities generally won't help take action or solve issues on what they don't know, because for some people, it's become the norm or it's become their way of living. So mostly if you're trying to tackle a certain sustainable development goal area, some may not see it as a problem and some may see it as their way of living or their norm. And in, in essence, not, take action into helping you or developing the ideas that you have to uplift those communities. For example, taking a look at communities in regions where they don't have um, access to adequate healthcare facilities, they can resort to other um, solutions such as home remedies or walking distances to see a healthcare provider. Being active, being that active global citizen means reaching out and educating those who are even hard to reach and ensuring that no person is left behind. We have to implement and uh, policies as we fulfill various sustainable development goal areas, not forgetting that, um, like Louisa and Jada explained that we start local and go global. That's what, that's the strategy I used. I didn't go global immediately, although I'm based here in the US, I still have strong ties with my country and not just my country, but Southern African countries such as Zimbabwe, Zambia, Swaziland, Lesotho, And we as global youth leaders have to remember Sustainable Development Goal 17, which talks about partnerships for the goals, because there is a need for cross-sector and cross-country collaboration in the pursuit of all goals that we need to reach by year 2030. And it's going fast. And we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to fulfill that agenda? Um, we have to, because sometimes it may seem as if you're not doing enough or you're doing little, but a little action goes a long way. You need to be creative. There's no way of doing or achieving something. There's no one way of doing or achieving something. And I believe that create, creativity builds enthusiasm, which lead, later leads to successful ventures. Building partnerships is also important because it allows us to gain exposure in different networks um, and social engagement. Through technology, this is possible because you don't need much to reach someone on a global scale. Like right now, we're, um, we're on a Zoom meeting and we have people from all around the world. And in the breakout sessions that we'll have after this, we'll have an opportunity to have that social engagement and in that social engagement and those circles, you have an opportunity to ask vital questions because I may be facing challenges that I think are unique to me, but find out that another youth leader in another country has the same thing, just like I said, on a different scale, 
And forming partnerships with people through social engagement allows us to tackle these goals. So um, currently, um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing research and work on, on global health policies. And it's allowed me to get an in-depth understanding about what, what different countries are going through, uh, whether it's developed or developing countries. I'm working with um, an organization called Setule Orphans Trust, which um, has developed a, a skill center. In this skill center, they have uh, children which, who are transitioning from rural areas into urban areas for education. And we find that um, uh, teaching them about these skills helps them to cultivate uh, uh, more skills necessary to build them forward. And in conclusion, I just believe that communication promotes important dialogue and this can help us uh, policies that have um, universal principle. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sifo. And thank you for raising so many important points and connecting to what Jadai and Luisa had raised before, right? The importance of raising awareness to get started, the importance of really local level collaboration. And I do think uh, one of the things we're saying uh, really connect to what I wanna hear from Shah as well, because I know his work, especially at Footsteps Bangladesh is very much related uh, to transforming communities, really moving from this um, mentality from aid development, uh, dependency to self-reliance. And it really resonated to me when you were saying that, right? The importance of finding solutions and perspectives in the local communities and collaboration, and really the values that are behind the SDGs and global citizenship of human dignity, not leaving anyone behind, inclusivity, equity. And Sha, the floor is yours. If you want to share a bit your perspectives and experiences with us, please go ahead. All right, thank you, Anna, for giving me this opportunity. Hi, everyone. My name is Shah. I'm from Dhaka, Bangladesh. I am an environmentalist and social entrepreneur by profession, and I run a next generation organization called Footsteps, where we work, where we actually design and implement social ventures and programs to not only address uh, community challenges, but also use these solutions to change community mentality from being dependent on aid to becoming self-resilient. So that's the main work that we do. Uh, we've been doing this work for the past nine years, and our main focus is on empowering communities with access to safe drinking water. We're currently also building uh, climate resilient and carbon neutral villages across Bangladesh. And we're also ensuring that medical critical medical services, as well as inf infrastructure re reaches the last mile communities. And it all basically began from the frustration that we had on why should these problems exist when the resources are actually there and why are we not utilizing those in the first place? So Footsteps itself, like our organization is a very experience driven organization in the sense that we are frustrated by the problems but also inspired by what is being done around the world and ensuring that these, uh, th this inspiration reaches the local level as well. And not only what happens around the world, but also what happens on ground as well. Because when you go on ground, when you see the people in the grassroots level making these changes with so many limitations that they're facing, it is not only inspiring for you to get your hands dirty and get on ground with them, but it is also an incredible learning experience. So when it comes to the question, I'll keep uh, I'll keep my uh, portion very short and simple so that everybody can also like you know relate to this. Uh, the question of you know what makes a good a glo uh, active global citizen. This is a question that I've been asked many times, and every time the answer changes because my perspective changes as well. So right now, I would say a good active global citizen is somebody who's also a good local active citizen because what you do locally will reach on a global platform if it is done right. And another thing about being a global active citizen is raising, raising your voice as much as you can. Basically not being loud, but having conversations with people from different aspects of life because you never know who may come into your journey and actually help you expand that idea of yours. That's how basically FUSS is expanded, starting from just a conversation and basically building on that conversation itself towards building on that journey. So 
I think when it, uh, one of the biggest limitations that young people face in terms of, you know, doing, uh, implementing their ideas or like, you know, chasing after their passion is basically one thing, one thought that goes around their mind when they're especially exposed to like, you know, platforms like this, why they don't want to raise their voice. What if my idea is stupid? What if it's not good enough? I think this is the biggest challenge that holds back many young people from actually doing what they want on ground. I believe that this shouldn't be the case. You shouldn't feel that your idea is not good enough or your idea is stupid. No idea is stupid out there because at first, if people might think that your idea is stupid, but then again, these are the, I, these are the ideas that are actually changing the world out here right now. Remember, I don't know if you remember when social media first came out, when platforms like Facebook first came out, people actually thought that was a very stupid idea. Who would use them? But right now we're basically working on uh, social media like Facebook, Instagram. These are platforms that we are completely dependent on. Platforms like Zoom, these are what we're dependent on. So being stupid is actually being a maverick as well in that sense. So do not be afraid, you know, share your ideas, have these conversations and having these conversations wherever you are in the world will reach a global scale because when we started footsteps when we started with the work that we did we didn't have that plan that okay we're going to reach a global scale at one point in life what we wanted to do is actually solve that problem so that mentality reached this stage today and it is because we focused on what frustrated us the most so if there's something that is frustrating you a problem that is frustrating you or if, if there's a dream that you want to chase just you know, go forward without, uh, go forward with it without any fear, you know, because you will succeed as long as you, you are passionate about it, as long as you're persistent about it, as long as you don't give up. And that is, I guess, I believe to be the key to be an active global citizen. What you do locally right now will reach every parts of the world. Another, another example would be, this is a, from a negative perspective. If like, you know, one patient in China is able, uh, if, if COVID is able to go from one patient in China to across the world, why cannot positive impacts do the same? So think of it in that mentality and go forward with what you dream about. So yeah, that's from me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shine. I like this idea, right? Or having a pandemic, a positive social impact. Maybe we can start creating that here. Uh, well, last but not least, I would love to invite Amanda to share a few thoughts and words with us. Uh, and then we're going to open to questions and uh, comments uh, from the audience so you all can reply to. Amanda, please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, please just let me know if you can hear me well before I start, because sometimes I have some connection problems. Um, first of all, good morning, afternoon, evening to everyone. And I would like to thank you very much for this opportunity to be here talking to you. And I would like to say that I'm really honored to be in a panel with people who are doing such amazing work all over the world. Um, and so here, um, I've one of the things I uh, wanted to focus more on what I have to say, also piling up on all the things that have been said. Um, I think that uh, especially I would like to, to build up on what Cha said about the importance of the local active citizenship. Because one thing that I think a lot when I think about global citizenship is uh, the focus on the word citizenship. You know, I think before or together with what we think about the global it's very, very important to think locally and again as as you said before about the impacts not only about what was also beautifully said about understanding the complexity of global issues and adapt them to local contexts and cultures also to understand how what we do locally impacts globally because we as local individuals which we are we are in a privileged place to understand this context and to act upon it. And uh, every decision we make will have a bigger impact. So when I talk about citizenship, I really think a lot about um, political citizenship and political participation, because it's Im impossible to achieve any of the sustainable de development goals we were talking about without politics and policies. And these can only be done with active citizen participation. Um, and I think that this is one thing we should 
consider and that we should talk about um, responsibility in that sense. Because I think one of the things we avoid a lot, especially um, in international um, events like this, which of course, in order to work, have to be uh, diplomatic in, a, in the sense of, you know, like adapting to whatever governments are in place. Um, I think it's still important without uh, advocating for different um, parties or political candidates. I think it's still important to advocate to political participation because this is our responsibility. Once when someone chooses not um, to participate in politics, this is not a neutral decision. This is still a political decision. And I think this have a lot of impact. Um, so for example, when you choose a president who will um, uh, who will not defend rainforests, the effects of that, they're going to happen to the whole world. You know, like the effects of climate change with local actions, they will have global impacts. So I think this is one uh, very important thing to consider. Uh, and then it brings me to another thing I would like to comment about, which is um, all these people we heard here before, they are such leaders in their communities. And this is a beautiful thing. And this is so important, all that you guys are doing. Um, but one thing that I, I, I would also like to add to, to everyone who's um, listening now is that, you know, I, I know that this is very inspiring, but I think it sometimes can also be a bit overwhelming seeing all these big things that people are doing. So um, I wanted us to also think that being an active global citizen is not um, always necessarily being a leader because leaders are needed, but we also need executors. So not everyone has to be the queen bee. We, can, we also need the working bees because without people who are going to take part in actions, nothing will work. So I think that when, when we think about, um, yeah, when, when I think about um, global citizenship and about uh, youth participation in this, uh, this is what comes to mind a lot. Um, so ab about how each of our actions um, can affect. And of course, uh, as a journalist, <laughs> I couldn't um, not talk about the importance of um, uh, of the dissemination of news and the dif dissemination of information. Because nowadays, especially with social media and with the internet, it's so easy to share hate speech. It's so easy to share information that is not uh, trustworthy. And all of this have serious consequences locally, regionally, and globally. So I think that um, being an active global citizen starts with these small steps. You may be focused on becoming a leader. You may have this amazing idea that, you know, like you don't have to, to think that it may be a silly idea, but you also don't have to start at the top. So you can start participating. You can start uh, being active on small on a small daily basis and build up from there. So I think this is what I would like to say. And thank you so much. Thank you, Amanda. And again, many great points made. Thank you for bringing us back to the importance of political participation and going back to the notion within active global citizenship that what do we mean by citizenship, right? What do we mean by this engagement? Uh, this is definitely great, very crucial. And policymaking is influencing policymaking and policymakers and who are the decision makers are, is of course a key way uh, to make a difference and make an impact at all levels, right? Starting at our very local community level and all the roles all of us can play. Of course, here today we have you guys, uh, different youth leaders with different uh, experiences and youth engagement, uh, but that doesn't mean that everyone needs to follow the same steps, right? We all have a role to play on how we can participate and be engaged as active global citizens. And now I would love to hear uh, from our audience uh, to engage with us. And I'm gonna invite you to share your questions or comments uh, in two ways, just so we can organize. 
uh, we won't lose the chat here since uh, it gets lost very quickly. We're going to use a menti that my colleague Steph is sharing on the chat where you can put your questions or comments via writing uh, if that's what you want. But you can also raise your hand if you would like us to unmute yourself so you can ask your questions here. We just ask you to keep uh, any oral remarks, comments uh, brief, quickly say your name, where you're connecting from, and then your question or comment. And while I share the mention on screen, I see Paula Silas from Costa Rica already has the hand up. Uh, Paula, please go ahead. Good morning from where I'm from. My name is Paula, like you said, I'm from Costa Rica. And I had a question, um, how or what actions do you suggest that we take on a daily basis? to be a young global citizen, like to actually make a change. Thank you, Paula. And I'll open any of our speakers want to take that. Two things um, come to my mind immediately. The very first thing was ask questions, um, like be willing to ask questions, um, because sometimes you may see um, well, one, like if you want to like be like making a change is based upon what people need. And sometimes you don't know what people need until you ask. <laughs> and sometimes like you can also ask questions of your own self to see like where it is that you want to be able to make like the kind of impact that would be most helpful, right? There was a time where I wanted to be um, an ophthalmologist, like an eye doctor. Um, but then, you know, when I actually spoke to one of my mentors, he helped me to understand that actually like one of my passions, like when I wanted to be an eye doctor, I wanted to be an international eye doctor who travels the world and like helping people to see. Um, but really, truly, my, my passion was in education. And I didn't know that the field of international education exists. Like what I had loved was the aspect of travel, helping people, and then going back to educate. And who knew that there was a way to do exactly that? So asking questions of yourself, asking questions of your community to identify what's needed, and then seeing how the things you love and the things your community needs can come together. And that's the sweet spot. And then like, who else is interested to help too? Like, because you also don't have to do it by yourself. Thank you. I see Amanda and Luisa have your hands up maybe to comment. Please go ahead, hey. Amanda and Luisa. Yeah, this is great. Thank you so much. Um, I would add, I think, to what uh, Jediah said that I think it's very important for us to be aware of what is happening in our communities. So, you know, like understand what's going on, know what projects of law are being voted in your community, you know, like participate active, actively uh on elections and um and things like that and again i think that another important thing um as i mentioned before is to be very careful and aware of the type of information um that you share uh before Louisa and Sipo answer I'm just going to take two more questions we have uh from hands up and then you can take on from that uh Tarido feel free to unmute yourself okay hi everyone I'm connected from Zimbabwe and I am I'm proud and I'm glad to be part of this workshop because I've kind of met a lot of people that I can relate to uh, so my question is, I, I'm really not aware that uh, such platforms do exist. I was amused uh, by hearing people speak of, uh, of their journeys. And I'm just like, wow, I'm really that kind of person too. I, I could very much relate, especially from Sipo from South Africa. So my question is, um, how can I be aware of such platforms or how can I be part of uh, such platforms so that I can also maximize my capacity. Thank you, Tarido. We'll take Daniela's question and then Sipo and Luisa, uh, you can answer because you had your hands up. Daniela, please go ahead. Hi, thank you. So I'm, I'm from Mexico and I know that universities have a huge role on developing in your uh, active citizens. Um, but my question is, how can we 
ensure that this uh, quality education that we would like to have at universities. Also, it's including humanitarian and social perspective with ethics and values. Like uh, universities, I think in my perspective and as a university student, that it's almost always focused on scientific knowledge. And that's fine because we need this. But we were also talking, and I and I guess Luisa mentioned this, that empathy values are also important to, to be active citizens. So my question is taking into account when we are talking about quality education in universities. I don't know if you can share some uh, uh, strategies or your own opinions about that we need to take it seriously, like values and, and ethics, and not only scientific knowledge. It is important, but not only. Thank you, Daniela. Sipo, you want to start commenting on those? Yeah, um, thank you for that question, Itario. Um, it's a, actually a great question. And um, there is the AFS website um, that you can learn about um, intercultural exchange programs. We do have a youth assembly coming up pretty soon, which is a great platform for you to um, engage with like-minded youth like yourself to um, tackle certain SDG areas that you're interested in. Um, I won't dwell too much into that right now, but if you want uh, some more um, information, you could. Uh, message me on the chat so that um, we give uh, the other panelists a, a chance to speak as well. There's also the UN Envoy, um, UN Envoy's website, which does give uh, great opportunities for young leaders. I know that last week there was um, one of the applications which closed about uh, being one of the 17 young sustainable development goal leaders. And I just feel that it's important as a young leader to network and do as much research as you can because the internet has endless endless opportunities but you just have to kind of narrow down and see okay what exactly am i interested in if i'm interested in uh things about health or education um do more research on that and see which organizations locally are working with that because i guarantee you almost 100 percent that there's always local organizations that are dealing with that and they can usually get you to, to more resources so that you can work in uh, projects that you have and everything. Thank you. Any other panelists uh, right. want to comment? May, yeah, can, can I just add something yes, um, in regards to, to this at the university? I think that also just like we always have local organizations that may be interested, I think it's also um, there are always going to be professors and other colleagues and classmates and other people who are also interested in that. So I think that um, you asked for tips on strategies and the such. So I think one of the things would be to try to identify these people and people who could work with you. You know, of course, these are also questions that and, and questionings that you can bring to your everyday um, as a university student, that's the kind of thing that you can bring, you know, like raise your hand and ask what about this during class. Um, but I think that also there are always people who are going to, to feel the same way as you do inside your institution and you can always partner up. Louisa. Yeah, thank you. No, I just wanted to add that, like indeed, I, I feel that I had the same situation Situation when I was in my university, I studied engineering, and it was a very like science oriented like like subject. And I remember that in my first year, I started with this kind of question: like I'm going to study during five years, like how to become an engineer, or I'm going to learn for life how to provide a solution for my community, um, from for the world by being an engineer. So I remember that I started like searching for opportunities. One of those was to, to volunteer locally in different organizations, just as Amanda mentioned, but also to prepare myself about what kind of a what kind of a contribution would I would I like to add to the world. So I think it's important also to start like framing like that journey about what would you like to do in the future and try to find this kind of opportunity that will 
enable to to strengthen your, perf your profile and also to connect you with these opportunities. Sometimes right now, like the universities, they have like lots of opportunities to do a uh, semesters abroad or one year abroad. Also, there are like multiple exchanges and there are like different groups. So I will encourage you to find these groups. And the second question about the platforms, I would say that technology and the internet is amazing because right now it's possible to find like lots of opportunities every day. So there is one website that I really like to, to check like, like regularly and it's called a Opportunity Desk. So basically they put together in one website different uh, scholarships or awards or different uh, calls for applications. So I will like recommend that to, to, to follow. And the last thing I wanted to say, like before, uh, before like, like the last question was about like how, like as a young people, sometimes we find solutions based on frustrations or based on problems. And I think that is so true. And my recommendation for this, because sometimes we see the problem, but we don't know what to do. And something that worked for me was to do a list of 50 things, like the 50 things that I really get annoying or frustrating from my community. And then after you have this list of 50 things, then try to find from this big list how you can contribute with a proper solution. So I think this is a way to like to do an exercise and to start like finding ways that you can contribute to something that really matters to you and that can like shape uh, the, your community and contribute also to a global uh, purpose. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Louisa. And thank you, Jadea, for being my co-facilitator, just typing things on the chat. Um, do you have something pressing to add now or should we get a few questions before uh, opening to panelists again? Um, let's get some more questions. I, I had a thought, but I can hold it. Okay, so I'll take some questions that are on the Menti. Some have been on uh, similar topics and I see Tabela and Gazal have your hand up. We'll just do a round from the Menti and then we'll go back to the two of you. So two questions that popped up uh, in our Menti Q&A is uh, one related on how can I expand my impact? Uh, we have been talking a lot about local and this seems like how can someone reach beyond their local communities and do an impact beyond the place they are localized? And the second is how can uh, we include others in being active global citizens that do not have the same access as us? And here I imagine access to information, to opportunities, to even technology, right? Uh, we know how much being here is more inclusive than being an in-person event. Uh, for example, if it was this was in person in the United Nations headquarters in New York, many few uh, would be able to attend, but there's still room for more inclusivity. So this question seems to be tackling around that. How can we uh, bring others together and give them these opportunities? So Jadea, I'll hand over to you and then we see if any other panelists wanna comment on that. Please go ahead. Um, okay, let's see. My first thought was in terms of expanding impact, like <clears throat> expanding impact how is like a thought that comes to my mind. And also like, I wanted to just invite us to think about how we think about impact. Um, my eyes get tired using the computer sometimes. So I'm gonna, I get my glasses, but yeah. So impact can show up in so many different ways too. So like one thing that I found, and I think the questions are actually related. The first thing I thought in terms of expanding impact is like working with more people. And then the next person also asked, how can I include others that don't have the same level of like access to? And so um, I just share a thought. So I have a friend named Sarita. I think she's brilliant. She loves a lot of things. She loves hip hop and she loves cooking and she loves food, right? And so she was like, you know what, um, I'm going to use the things that I love to create something and put it together and like offer it to the world. So she created a cooking class and contest for young people so that they can like take in hip hop lyrics. Sometimes like we rap about like food. And so, you know, like she'll actually say, hey, let's learn how to cook the thing. And then like letting, creating a, what do you call it, a program that gets children into culinary arts into learning how to cook and like created jobs and things like that. And so it would have never occurred to me that an area of impact 
like that actually provides educational outcomes would come from just enjoying music and enjoying food and putting those together in that way. But that was her way of like developing and creating impact just by using the things that she had around her. So I, like my thought is like make more friends, <laughs> like get to know more people. Maybe the, you see folks in the chat who are like interested in different like issue areas or who like come alive when you talk about certain things. It's just like Luisa said, sometimes it's out of the frustration, but it can also be out of the things that give us joy that we can also like find ways to like grow our impact, right? And so I think that part about access also comes with advocacy. And so, you know, just the importance of being able to speak for those who are not in the same rooms as you. So everybody here, if you're here and you have access to a device that allows you to be on a computer, it means that you know at least one other person, unless you're a person who invented your own computer, put it together and then did it all yourself, right? So what I'm saying is that at the very least, what we can be doing is taking this conversation and tell someone else about what you learned, right? Or ask someone a question about, hey, so I, did you know that, you know, did you know about sustainable development goal number 17? Do you know anybody else working on this? Or, hey, I just learned today about like, you know, sustainable development goal number three about good health and well-being that this is going on in South Africa. Do we have anything like that in our country? Like, take the time to, to share and to educate and like those conversations introduce you to all kinds of other things. Like someone just sent me a message who I had met in a, like a conference back in like 2015. And I'm like, oh my gosh, hey, how are you doing? How are things in Pakistan right now? But it's like those friendships too also help with like, can help the world as well. You know, like this, this very moment could be life-changing if you take, you know, if we take some time to go outside of just the screen that we're on. I hope that helps. Thank you. Let's take one more question, Tabelos, and then we can go around for each panelist uh, to share back your final thoughts on these questions or final comments. Just a quick note that Shah had to leave. Uh, he'll try to reconnect shortly, but uh, just so you know that that's the reason why you're not seeing him on screen. Uh, Tabelo, can you share your questions with us? Yes, thank you so much. Can I please uh, share without you know putting up the video? Yes, please, we hear you well, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so I'd like to comment first on a point that was made about how it's important to raise awareness about things because um, where I am right now, my country, we are about to have a domestic violence act for the first time. So that means up, at, up until this point, if a woman was abused by her husband, for instance, it would be treating the courts as common assault, as if it was some stranger that beat you up to your own husband. Um, so that's actually something that's now going to be a law. It's very much in the process of becoming an actual law, domestic violence law. And I happen to know that one of the challenges that is going to be in place after the law is passed is actually having people knowing that, oh, by the way, now you have these particular rights and the, this kind of access to help from the police. And you might even find that um, there's the law, the law is there, but it has no impact or it's basically non-existent because nobody knows about it. So things continue on in the same way. Um, I had a question. Am I still audible? Yes, I had a question um, about getting people to be um, more active, uh, more actively participating in politics and in uh, being more active citizens. Because here in my country, we have the challenge of people being very used to being idle, used to being, um, you know, just being complaining about the way things are, but never never feeling like they need something that they can do or do not, never wanting to be a part of the solution. So I wanted to know when people are cultured and conditioned so much to be idle, how do you go about changing that? Because I feel like it's deep and it's psychological and it's mostly among women and youth, the sad part. Thank you. Thank you, Tabelo. And maybe we can start with Amanda, if you have any thoughts or comments, and then we'll circle okay. back with the other panelists for your final comments and thoughts. Thank you so much for this question, Tabello. And also thank you for sharing about this new law from Lesotho. This is um, a very good, good thing to hear. 
Um, I think that, yeah, it's, it's a very big challenge, um, of course. And I think that this also comes a lot from education. I think education is in the roots of all of it. Um, but I also think that through, if we think about education on a uh, school system, this is the kind of thing that would take generations. Um, so what I think um, is that we have, you know, like so, so many of our panelists and have mentioned, you know, like how many amazing things we can have with the internet and with social media. Um, and I think that especially with the younger generations who are so active in this media, I think that this is the kind of thing um, that, you know, like it, this uh, social media and the internet, they are tools that can be used in different directions. So the same way um, in many countries, for example, it can be used to spread fake news and disinformation and hate. It can also be used to promote um, political participation. Um, and I think that, um, again, as I said, we don't have to start at the top. I think this all starts with small trends and small actions that can get us there. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you so much. And again, thank you so much for this invitation. And it was a pleasure being part of this panel. Thank you. Tifo, you want to share a few thoughts uh, and answer the final questions before? Sorry. Oh, um, I already shared some thoughts on the chat, so I'm good. Thank you. Louisa? Yeah, no, I would say that I agree with Amanda, like education is key, like for this kind of like issues. And I think as a global citizen, it's important to, to push ourselves to keep learning something new every day. So I would I would recommend like to, to be involved in these kind of groups of people that are already like sharing new content, that are already like opening spaces for for, for youth. Um yeah, like that, that would be like my general advice. Thank you. Thank you, Louisa. Jadea, final thoughts or words? Do you hear that? Does anyone else hear the, the fire engines out here? I'm just like a whole New York symphony happening outside of, okay. Um, so pardon me, I did have a thought. Right, so to the question, I think that creating small wins is like a great way to like start working toward like larger change. I noticed that, and I also live in a community where a lot of people are not engaged or aware of um, the laws that impact our lives um, and also may, like, may not have in a, a belief that we can do much about it. But sometimes like asking someone to um, do a thing might be the equivalent of asking them to scale a mountain, right? Where it's like, okay, but can we start with, <laughs> with like how like this impacts everyday life? Like how can we, as we're developing our own idea that we're capable, it's like being when we're, you know, when we're children, we learn how to walk first before we learn how to run. But I guess what I'm saying is that like it takes small actions on the day to day in order to create like larger change. And sometimes in order for us to even be able to believe in ourselves, like it, it starts with, you know, accomplishing something small together before we can like take on <laughs> like national um, campaigns and like whole countries. So I would, I would encourage us to, to think in that way, to know that it's not all gonna be done in one day or one week or one month, one year, or even one lifetime, but it takes like the small little bits of action too, and be willing to like put in that work. And also finding allies too, is something that's very helpful. I heard that among women and youth, sometimes the sense of like, there's not much that we can do can, um, can really like permeate and be present in us in that, hey, if finding allies in like someone who's like willing to support, who has even a bit more power or like the person who's considered cool, like <laughs> connecting with that person who has like that, that aspect of influence too, to help guide like larger aspects of community to like get things done. It's like I work with like young students a lot and sometimes like the students who, um, who, are using their powers of influence for evil <laughs> i'll put it that way or like not uh or getting on my nerves to put it another way but it's like you know what Let's put some more time and attention and like energy because it's like that's also energy that can be 
uh, transmuted and changed into and, or directed into like a positive direction as well. It's like many, many girls may be told that we are talkative in class too much or maybe we're bossy. It's like, actually, you have leadership potential. <laughs> and so like, let's create a way or a project or a means for us to be able to channel that energy in like a positive manner and like use that for the benefit of the community. So um, yeah, I hope that that's helpful. And thank you so much for that question. And thank you, um, Tebelo, for teaching me something new about what's going on in Lesotho. Thank you so much. Thank you y'all for coming today and sharing your perspective, experiences, and having this open dialogue with us and everyone here today. And I think this is a great segue from what we have next, uh, which is we're going to practice an intercultural education tool that we use at AFS, at one activity that we do that are the effectless workshops. Uh, Based on that, we also developed an educator toolkit that is free to be downloaded online. I'll ask my colleagues to share the link to that on, uh, on the chat as well, so you can look at it afterwards. And we invite our speakers to stay with us if you're available. You can go to a breakout room and join this activity as well. And this will be an opportunity, well, first to connect with each other in smaller breakout rooms with a facilitator and practice this too, that it's really a call to really start looking and observing our environment, starting by our local communities uh, and really building this mindset of not only active listening, uh, but changing our lenses when we observe our environments and the challenges that surround us. So we will do that, as I mentioned, in breakout rooms. Uh, where you will be joined by an AFS facilitator, most of them using this green, yellowish, bluish uh, background. One thing that we do ask you to do as you are moving virtually to a breakout room, once I say go, you will see the joint breakout room uh, in front of you shortly, but make sure you have a pen, pencil, colored marker, and a piece of paper at hand. It can be a small block. You'll, you'll be asked to do some reflection activity in the breakout room, and it might be useful to do that uh, via writing. Uh, and just so you know, after the activity is done, we will return to plenary for some share back and closing remarks as well. So. Don't leave right away. We'll just come back and close and say our goodbyes uh, before wrapping up today's session. So let's see how we are. I do see some people are asking uh, to save the chat. While you are in breakout rooms, I'll look into uh, those options uh, to see if you have that option. But we're also going to be sharing with you afterward uh, the recording and information from today's session. Uh, you won't be recorded in breakout rooms, just so you know. Steffi, are we ready to go or do you need a few more seconds to set up the breakout rooms? Um, I just opened the room so you can just click on join. Um, and those who didn't receive an invitation, I will assign you now. Yes, if you have any issues, Steffi and I will be here in the main room and we can help you. Uh, move to your breakout room if needed. Super fast. Uh, it's never enough time in breakout rooms, but I hope you had some time to meet some new people and share a bit of your reflections during the activity. Uh, you should have gotten these instructions when you were leaving your breakout room. If not, you still have time to do them now. We're inviting you to upload your drawings that you did in your breakout rooms. Uh, in the activities into our Padlet wall. Steffi just shared the link to the Padlet uh, in, the, in the chat. So you can click on that. To upload to Padlet, it's a bit tricky, but you will see a very small pink plus sign at the right uh, bottom corner. So you should click on that uh, and then a screen will pop up where you can, on the subject, we invite you to add your name, the name of the your community, neighborhood, city, and country. And then you can click on that first icon there to upload your image. You can do that via your phone if you have a smartphone. If you don't have any gadget with you right now to take a picture of your drawing, don't worry. We're gonna keep this Padlet wall open after we wrap up uh, the workshop today. 
and this is just for you to have a look at what others did maybe there is someone from the same community as you or the same country and you can have a look at what they identified uh, as they were doing this activity uh, and also from others so i'll give you a few more seconds and we'll see if we have some drawings and while we do so i would love to invite a few of our facilitators to show back with us any highlights from your discussions and conversations if we can start uh, with Yumina, uh, your group, would you share a few words with us? Um, how was the activity and the reflection? Sure. Um, so we had a, a group uh, and one of the individuals, either from, I think, pretty much every region of the world. Um, I know there was, we had a member from Libya uh, and she spoke about some of the issues uh, that she sees in the community, such as gender inequality, uh, and noted that there are such sensitivities around these issues that it sometimes it becomes really hard for people to reflect or share on these issues. Um, and one of the really important things I think someone raised was you see all of these problems in your country or your communities, but you don't really always think about where are they coming from. So I think that um, kind of learning or understanding better the root causes of some of the problems that a lot of the people are going through in your societies is a, kind of a good starting point to understand the needs of that community. So that's really what we were able to discuss and touch upon. Thank you so much, Yumina. Sean, would you share with us a few words, insights from your group? Sure. Um, I had a smaller group and we all loved the, I played some background music, which we all started grooving to. So that was fun. Um, we had time for one reflection and the biggest takeaway from that reflection, um, the participant shared how urgent it felt that not only she gets involved in trying to make and create more local impact, but instilling that urgency in her friends as well. And I thought that was so poignant and um, something that I also care deeply about. So it was really inspiring to hear that. Um, I wished that we could have had a, a longer reflection in the room, but that was one of the positive takeaways. Thank you, Sean. Fabrizia, would you share with us uh, some of the takeaways from your room? Yeah, so uh, we have one participant say that she's totally focused on education and she didn't have time yet to really get to know the neighborhood or go around because it's completely focused on the university. And there are two sides of it, right? This is a very interesting exercise to allow them to get to know a little bit where they live in, right? If you have those questions in mind and trying to observe those things in the neighborhood. And the other uh, thing is that uh, the curiosity that it brings, right? The more you get the opportunity to go and, and see what's going on, you know, the more you're gonna be able to do something about it, right? And and I, I did also mention that maybe not, you cannot at this point do something locally in your neighborhood, maybe you can do in your university. If this, this is where you spend most of the time, right? So you can find some things that inspire you to do something or if I, you even find the frustration she always mentioned to us that led him to do the, to start his work, this also could happen university level. Thank you, Fabrizia. Andre, is care to share a few thoughts from your group with us? Sure. First of all, I would like to tell to the participants who were in my breakout room, thank you. And sorry that it was so short, but as I was saying, this was a sample activity for you to understand how it actually works. I wish we had more time to reflect. I had a couple of private messages as well, so maybe you didn't see all, but there was one particular insight that I really liked about how uh, sometimes we ignore our surroundings. We are so used to uh, our local communities that we forget how much diverse they can be uh, or all the different issues and complexities and maybe troubles that might be happening that we don't notice. Um, and, but once we go out and pay attention to the details and things that uh, people need that might not be our individual needs, but our um, collective needs, Real, realize how complex that can be. Um, that was really interesting to, to read and to listen to. So thank you all. Thank you, Andres. 
Anais, a few thoughts from your group? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Ren, for participating in the activity. I think a few things that were interesting were that um, someone shared that overall, all our neighbors are kind of common, kind of find the same things everywhere. But then when you really take a moment to look at it, that's when you realize that, oh, we're all, not all going to share the same answers to all those questions. And even showed that some answers were not found for some questions. We couldn't even find an answer to some of them. Another thing that came out that was interesting is uh, how they, they became more conscious of the privileges that exist in the neighborhood. And even when it's a neighborhood that's one, one kilometer away from their home, they might be in a privileged neighborhood and just one kilometer from there, they just don't have the same infrastructure. And realizing that let them, most of the participants to kind of a, a reality check in the way they shared it, a reality check on their own reality and figuring out how things are actually working in their own neighborhood that maybe they were not really conscious of or really looking at until now, until they had this reflection. Thank you so much. Manuela, a few thoughts from your group? Thank you. Um, so although we weren't able to close the reflection, some of the things I, I think were interesting about it, the things we shared was how everything is connected in a way. So uh, we would start talking about problems with transportation or education and how that, and suddenly we're talking about gender equality, inclusion, um, climate change, just how all of the different problems have similar solutions and through education and advocacy and just talking with each other and communicating, we can uh, solve a lot of those different challenges. Thank you. Linda, what about the group that was with you? Anything else you wanna add that popped up on the discussion? We had a really great, passionate, diverse group from Colombia, Japan, Canada, Hong Kong, Belgium, and they, everyone saw the importance of the SDGs in their local environment. We talked about education, discrimination and microaggressions showing up in a community, especially where there were large numbers of immigrants, agriculture and food security, biodiversity and peace and security. And everybody was excited to be connecting here across interests and wanted to stay connected and be able to share on and find these platforms to share on. Thank you. I'll invite one more facilitator, Veronica, would you share with us from your group? I guess, um, sure. Well, we talk about tolerance and how important it is to, to understand that we are different people with different ideas, that we are coming from different places. And everyone was enjoying the, um, this exercise so much. So one of the questions was uh, how to engage more people to start thinking about this, to do this exercise. And I think that's a great segue for our wrap up because that's exactly the question we have for you. Let me share my screen again. And we wanna invite all of you to share with us your ideas to action. What can you do now, right? So we're gonna use Menti again, Steph is sharing, and here you can submit uh, a small text, a short paragraph with your ideas. Uh, and it might be, this is one very simple exercise that we did, but just to show you the power of taking perspective, right? When we look at something surrounding us, our community, observing our environment, just taking this step back and looking at different levels and complexity that might be right over there in the place we live every day, looking at different challenges that our community face. So this is a starting point connected to what we heard from our panelists earlier related to raising awareness, right? So one idea might be how you can use this exercise and we're gonna share with us the instructions for them and other toolkit we have with other activities. So, and maybe it's related to something you heard during the panel, maybe something one of the youth speakers said, that really touched you and that you're feeling now motivated uh, to doing uh, right after you leave this. And remember, it doesn't need to be something a huge action, but it can be something as small as sharing about this and what you heard today uh, with your friends, your family, your colleagues and other people. 
So I'm going to open the Menti so we can see some of the ideas that are coming up there and maybe you can get ideas from the ideas others are sharing. So let's have a look at that. Okay, we have a lot of things coming in already. So sharing what you learned today, wanting to look for ways to raise the SDGs as a conversation at my local community board in New York City, open my own NGO to actively help minorities in my country, get my friends and family involved in the discussion, promote workshops by NGO on the importance of land use and biodiversity, teaching the uneducated, not being afraid to be stupid. No idea is stupid. This is great. Connecting with like-minded people and taking a bold step at a time. Definitely look for others to connect and join forces. Listening and talking to others in my community to learn what the community wants. Going to aim to have small victories and getting more of my people to become active citizens. Identifying a challenge and working on its essential for small victories is that the youth, we have the chance to change the world from local to global. First idea today was to listen and respect different kinds of the things and people. Plan an event to promote the SDGs I champion, ed educate while also encourage you to take up an ambassadorial role. Insightful discussion, learned a lot, we research more about it. Share what I learned today with my team. Uh, this is great. Global future. We want tournament competition to get all upper primary and lower secondary classes worldwide to prepare three, four minute presentations of where achievement of SDGs in their community. Thousands in prices for schools worldwide. Some great ideas and I'm sure you have many more. And before we, you go, we just want to say a big thank you to everyone and remind you about an opportunity that my colleague Nikki shared today. If you're interested in continuing this type of conversations, uh, Nikki, you want to share the invitation again? Sure. Yeah, I want to say just a huge thank you to everyone for being here. Go back one slide super quick, Carol, because I think even before that, the most important invitation is to really, really connect with the Department of Global Communications and Civil Society Unit at the UN. Because obviously, if you're here, you care about the SDGs and you should follow along and do everything you can to support them. But also, please connect with AFS. Follow us on social media. Sign up for our newsletter. Um, we'll send you an email when this is done with all sorts of fun links. And it was so nice to see you all connecting. And then, yes, in addition, Carol, next slide. If you are interested, please definitely consider coming to the 2022 Youth Assembly in New York City. We would absolutely love to have you there. So our sincere thanks to everyone, also to our amazing facilitator, Carol, who is the best. Um, and I really hope we can stay connected with every single one of you online, in person. Um, Carol, any last words from you? No, just thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was a joy. It didn't even feel like two hours. I feel we needed more time, especially in the breakout room. So thank you so much. Really appreciate you dedicating your time and joining this conversation today. Thank you all speakers and facilitators as well, and our colleagues at the Department of Global Communications at the Civil Society Unit at the UN. Thank you all. Bye.